welcome back to Khaki Bush. Now, I'm going to have a quick discussion today regarding safety in Africa. Very general, but I'm not going to be talking about safety uh, regarding, for instance, safari, traveling in vehicles, uh, specifically hotels and airport. Those are items that I could discuss at a later stage in different videos. What I am going to do is this very general safety discussion. Now, if you go to our webpage, www.kakibush.com, there is a section that discusses safety. If you go to the page, at the, f the first page that pops up, choose Southern Africa. Southern Africa is the only section that currently that is live. Uh, go in there, there's a section called Travel Support. Click on that and then go to the, the page that says Safety. That will give you more insights on traveling in vehicles, uh, hotels, airports, etc. What I want to do is a quick little discussion on uh, safety from my perspective. So, I believe that to be safe in Africa, you've got to be extremely conscious of your surroundings at all times. That, to me, is the most important thing. Uh, you're not going to go stand, stand out in the middle of the town uh, with your camera out uh, doing selfies in the middle of a market where oaks are hustling to survive. Pretty much. Um, you're going to be a target for pickpocketers, guys trying to fleece you for money, anything like that. Now, that can be in every uh, third world country in the world. Not, not, not very different to, to South Africa. Any third world country will have that. Now, and I'm not going to say, you know, pickpocketing doesn't only just happen in Africa. It happens everywhere. So you've got to be conscious of, of, of wherever you go, quite frankly, in the world. But, you know, South Africa does have a large uh, issue regarding poverty uh, where people are living be, uh, below the breadline. Now, um, coming back to Africa, I just want to talk about Africans who have actually compared, well, traveled overseas, and you can do a little bit of a comparison. Um, I know an individual who traveled to UK, and whilst in London, he got mud in the first week there whilst on a business trip. Now, he then went to Ireland the following week and had the same occurrence there. It does happen here as well, but it happened there to him. He has lived his entire life here and never been mugged, but it happened to him there. Myself, I've never had any major issues in Africa. I've never been mugged, I've never had a gun pointed at me, I've never had a knife pointed at me. I've literally uh, had small items stolen. I've had, my biggest issue was I actually had my cell phone stolen out of my pockets, uh, but I was at, out at a club, inebriated, and quite frankly, my fault. Not my fault, I wouldn't say it's my fault, but you know, I was an easy target. And, and that's what the guys are, 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 are thriving on. Now, um, so nothing's really major has happened to me here, but I, I've never been mugged. I went to Amsterdam. My wife was on a business trip there, uh, I, so I joined her. And I was for a first couple of days getting the lay of the land. Had never been there before. So by myself, I was walking around. I ended up in a very, very sh shady stretch. I'm not talking about the red light district or anything like that. It was actually just a little side road off, uh, not even the middle of town, but off. And, and as soon as I walked into this area, I could feel something was not right there. This individual came right up to me, extremely quickly, and started asking me for money. And I, I, I didn't have any money. I mean, I was traveling on with my credit card. Uh, I mean, I don't travel with cash. And the psych was all over me. Wanted small money, big money, and then started getting a bit pushy wanting everything that I had. Thank goodness these individuals, uh, several burly guys from UK who were on a bulls party, they were probably rugby players or something, I managed to, to squeeze in between and get away from this guy. This like didn't want anything to do with those guys because they were big. They were far bigger than I was. Uh, and they were inebriated, so this ache didn't want to get involved with them, clearly. And, 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 and look, I'm not saying it doesn't happen in Africa, but it does happen everywhere else as well. And, and I've had friends who, who have moved to Australia. I know one guy who, uh, who surfed all the time in, in, in South Africa. And he would have all his stuff in his vehicle, uh, come back, everything's fine, go off to work. No problems. Uh, he goes to Australia um, and he goes for a surf. First week there, he, 
it, everything under is closed. Windows smashed. Everything's taken. Um, so, and, and a couple of mates there have actually had their heart. Their, uh, uh, a lot of friends of mine who have moved there have had uh, uh, robberies in their homes. Now, it happens everywhere. It's not a. It's not a. Uh, safety is not an issue just in this in this in this continent. It happens everywhere. Uh, at the end of the day, you really just got to be conscious of of where you're going, uh, who you're with, what you're doing, uh, and travel with somebody. Travel with a tour guide, um, especially if you're a large group. I mean, he can make sure you're all shuffled together in the right place, that you're not doing something stupid, or you're not wandering off in the wrong place. Let him handle that. Enjoy your start yourself. If there's a, if you're a small group of, of of mom and dad and two kids. Travel on your own. Get in your own. Get in a higher vehicle and travel. Just be conscious of what you're doing. There's no issues. Uh, I've got family here. My kids. My wife will go out into the cities by herself, but she knows where to go. Unfortunately, tourists don't, so it does help to have a little bit of inside knowledge. So a tour guide would really help. Or get a travel agency to set up an itinerary uh, for you. Go from here to there uh, and arrange transport as well for you. Now. The biggest issues usually would be from uh, uh, airport to your hotel, um, but the safest thing to do is to just uh, let the hotel arrange a shuttle service to pick you up and take you there. Uh, and then once you're there, you, you'll start feeling a bit more comfortable and maybe then you'll start maybe go hire a vehicle or something. But um, yeah, I, would, I wouldn't trust the... Uh, for tourists, uh, the local transport uh, services, uh, but definitely, I mean, there is Uber, but shuttle service, best option. This is Africa. Things can go wrong. Um, you know, we're going to talk about the biggest issues really is rights uh, that you could be caught up in, uh, or, or let's say strikes. And I'm not talking about a strike where someone's holding up a placard and boom, boom. Talking. I'm talking about serious drugs where they'll actually close off the road, burn tires, etc. So those are issues in Africa you must be conscious of. Uh, they're almost like riots, to be honest with you. A strike in Africa is more like a riot. Um, and and coup d'etats. I mean, we've had Zimbabwe had one where that Mugabe was was removed from presidency and there was riots and stuff. So those are things you've got to be careful. Um, but again, uh, if you're traveling with the tourist. God, he would he would keep you away from those things, and and you know if there were things playing in those areas, he would take you away, and that on the pulse of what's happening in the country. Um, so very good thing to travel the tour guide. I really um, advocate uh, individuals or, or many groups to travel with with uh, a tour guide. Um, but again, as I said, a smaller group, you it is safe enough to to travel in your own vehicle. Again. Plan your routes, that's the most important thing. Um, anyway guys, uh, sorry if that was a bit of a rant, uh, but just a quick little discussion on safety. Uh, we will be doing far more safety uh, tips in the future. I will be doing a specific on vehicle traveling in a vehicle in Africa. Uh, it's talking about 4x4 safety, uh, traveling overland and, and overland and dirt roads, etc. Safari will be quite a big one. Uh, and I'll also be doing things on, on airport safety uh, in the future. But um, thanks for listening. Uh, I hope you enjoyed it. Please like and subscribe to our channel so we can grow. And uh, yeah, please, if you ever come to Africa, send us a DM and let's chat and maybe maybe we could meet up with you guys but again also please go to our website and follow uh also follow our social influences go on the main page go to southern africa go to travel support go to social influences and in there we have a um uh, a list of social influences what are your interests are if there's photography overlanding uh, just general travel to uh, guides Watch their videos. They give you a lot of insight on what's happening in Africa or specific, like a, a Cape Town or Namibia. A guy, you know, there's some guys there who will travel through Botswana in the overlanding vehicles. Some amazing, amazing places. So please go follow them. We also have a section in our website which uh, you can go to and you can download the Spotify um, uh, app 
for music and we have a section where we have created a list of our favorite uh, bands and singers in Southern Africa. We haven't gone further yet, but Southern Africa, we've got our chosen uh, road trip uh, bands. So if you come here, go on there, download it and listen to the music while you're on your road trip through, through Africa. Anyway guys, thanks so much for listening. Uh, I hope it wasn't too much of a rant for you. But yes, again, please like and subscribe and we'll see you in the next one. Cheers.